Boy, it's Monday evening already. Boy, that weekend just flew right by, didn't it? Welcome back, though, guys. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. It's about that time of day again here, though. Time to get back to work. It's Monday evening. It's June the 7th, 2021. My name is Joseph, and as always, welcome back to your nightly newsletter. Now, if you're watching for the first time tonight, it's great to have you with me because my job tonight is to help us find the best trade setups for tomorrow. That's Tuesday's trading session. i got a great video in store for you guys tonight. Charts are all ready in the background, as you can see. S&P's ready. NASDAQ ready. Oh, you know the gold is ready for tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, got some news on our radar tomorrow. Make sure you know what news we're watching for the biggest moves of the day tomorrow. And of course, boy, speaking of big moves, got NASDAQ bumping higher, gold bumping higher, S&P's trying to push higher here. I'll tell you though, got a bunch of range bound setups, bunch of failures, bunch of breakouts. And of course, with gold and NASDAQ, got some continuation trades on my radar for tomorrow. Really excited for this entire entire week and lots to cover here tonight on this video by the end of this video tonight you'll know where my favorite entries and exits will be for tomorrow my favorite setups to use and you'll also know how to stay out of trouble with some traps to avoid and possibly capitalize on those traps tomorrow morning in our trade room or if you trade on your own right tomorrow morning on your own trading now of course before we jump into the charts tonight though i just want to make sure to remind you make sure you subscribe make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel we publish this video newsletter every evening i don't want you to miss tomorrow night's video so make sure you subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit that little bell icon so you always get notified every time we publish something new and if you guys have any questions for me don't be afraid to drop those questions for me in the comment section I would love to answer all your questions so drop them if you got them and as always I really appreciate you guys tuning in every evening and watching this video and getting ready for the following day with me if you enjoy the video as much as I enjoy making it do, do me a big favor here hit that like button that thumbs up here for me this video I really appreciate you guys supporting this channel by subscribing, dropping those questions if you guys got them, and of course, uh, thumbs up on the video if you guys are the content here tonight on this newsletter. But enough of the intro, though. Time is ticking. A little bit behind schedule here tonight. We lost power here in the office for a couple hours this afternoon, so I'm playing catch-up, but that's all right. I saved the best for last with you guys here tonight. Charts are all ready to go here. You can see here, everything is bullish. The NASDAQ and the gold are pretty easy, right? You got some big open loop moving the gold, open loop moving the NASDAQ. Those are pretty easy, right? Looking for continuations here right buying pullbacks i'm also anticipating possibly a bit of a short squeeze on the nasdaq and the gold and those can be a bit tricky so you'll definitely want to watch tonight's video if we do see you know for example gold is kind of fluttering higher right now low volume I'll talk about kind of why that's important and kind of how to trade that. There's a couple uh, different variations of this short squeeze I've been watching in the gold. So would love to buy some pullbacks on the NASDAQ and the gold for tomorrow. I wouldn't be opposed to a reversal, but we'd have to kind of be careful here because we have a lot of momentum uh, going higher on the NASDAQ and the gold. So look to buy pullbacks. Would love to trade possibly, again, a little bit of short squeeze on the, on the NQ and the GC for tomorrow. Over on the S&P, do you see the S&P? Two ranges, range above, range below. What does that usually mean? Well, that means we have a double distribution environment. We talked about that last week. And what happened last week was it created a big volatile day uh, the following day. So I have, I have pretty high hopes for some good volatility on the S&P with two ranges on the S&P. We're looking to trade the edges, right? Buy and low selling high trying to avoid the middle i've got some i've got some more reliable setups i'm tracking in the middle of that range but with a range of course we're trading failures around the edges and we're trading breakouts as we go into uh you know potentially making a run at those all-time highs right all-time highs are within striking distance there on the s p so we'll definitely have that on our radar we're trading failures we're trading breakouts on the s p we're buying pullbacks right we're trading reversals on the nasdaq and the gold again by the end of this video tonight you'll know my favorite setups and the most important traps to avoid tomorrow on tuesday's trading session speaking of tuesday before we jump into the chart Though, let's just make sure we're all on the same page here for the news tomorrow. It's the second week of the month of June, which historically does not mean a lot of major news on the schedule. You'll notice this second week there is no Fed speakers here this week, they go into a lockout period before their next FOMC announcement. 
uh, next week, the following week, as we go later in the month of June. So we don't have any Fed speakers here this week, right? Which is probably a good thing for the price action. And you'll notice there really isn't a lot of big news until we get to that Thursday CPI and jobless claims, we have probably the what, what what might be considered the most anticipated news report of the year, possibly of 2021, is that core CPI report coming out at 8:30 on Thursday. We have all watched the markets become obsessed with inflation over the past few weeks. Here, the Fed's been dodging those right those questions left and right about will they taper, will they raise rates, right? Will they take away the stimulus? from this kind of post-pandemic or transitional market we're seeing right now. So that is by far the big news of the week here. There's also an ECB uh, a meeting or announcement on Thursday morning. And I hate to, to bring it all up right now, but there's also probably going to be rollover on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week for the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Russell, the E-minis, right? So there's a lot coming later on this week. Tomorrow, though, there's not a lot on the radar. We've got the 8.30 news, that international trade number at 8.30. You know, honestly, I don't expect that to be the market moving event tomorrow. If I had to bet on where the biggest move tomorrow or the most uh, tradable move tomorrow comes, I would bank on that jolt support, the job openings, layoffs, and transfer survey. It is well known as Janet Yellen's favorite news report. She, of course, is the Treasury Secretary here in the U.S. And if I had to guess, I would guess probably the best price action setups we'll see tomorrow would be in the wake of that 10 o'clock announcement. Again, it's not a major news report, but you know, markets are rebounding after a pandemic. Everybody's watching the jobs reports we're seeing right right now to see where the economy is growing and lagging and you know again I'm not gonna I, I won't go into too much detail on that but I would definitely be making sure you're at your desk and be aware of that jolt report at 10 o'clock eastern time now don't forget tomorrow morning every morning Monday through Friday we trade this stuff together we get together every day in our trade room it opens up at 8 o'clock eastern time I would love to have you there right there with us I'll put all the membership links you guys need to get registered I'll put in that description of this YouTube video. I'll also put a big button for you right below me tonight on the trading blog. So grab that big button, get registered. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Maybe we'll see you. Maybe we'll see something off the international trade number, but I wouldn't hold your breath. I would definitely, though, make sure you're paying attention with us tomorrow morning in our trade room at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Let's keep going, though. Again, we'll talk more about the rest of the week specifically that CPI report. We'll talk about that here as we go into the rest of this week's nightly newsletters. Again, Thursday being the big day here. And again, we are likely going to start seeing volume make a turn here on the E-minis, right? The S&P, of course, on the 621 contract. There's nowhere near the volume on the 921 right now. But just, you know, we'll be watching that closely as we go into the rest of the week here. And once the 921 takes more volume, we'll start trading that one in our trade room. Next up here, let's grab some charts here, shall we? Uh, S&P's ready, NASDAQ's ready, gold is ready. Like I mentioned, big range on the S&P, but nice strong trends though right now on the gold. Why don't we jump first here into the S&P 500? Now, boy, does this bring back memories to last week. Was it last week or I think it was two weeks ago on the gold where we had a very similar situation where basically a you have kind of one big range bound market right now that's broken up into two small ranges, right? Now, you can't see the first one very easily on this 7,000 tick chart. This is a 7,000 tick chart. But if you were with us today in the trade room, right, there was this very small little range here. They sprinted lower into, as you can see, another range down here. And we talked about this this morning, right? We were expecting this to rotate back up and kind of create this bigger uh, a trading range. When you see these, you know, kind of these double range days, remember, the key takeaway here is, is both of these ranges act like a magnet. And so you'll tend to kind of get the market to roll around back and forth, right, between these two magnets. If you were to take a bit of a, a bit of a step back here, just for a second, 
remember what happened last Friday, right? We had that reversal off the low. We talked about this last week, right? That reversal off the low, that big melt up market, that kind of runaway market last Friday. Remember we had that jobs report that was nowhere near the million the million uh, jobs number they were fantasizing about. It came in about about half of that. It's amazing though that you know even bad news is good news right now because bad news for, for jobs means more stimulus, right? So that's kind of the way the markets are seeing this right now. It, it came to no surprise today that a big move down uh, or a big move up on Friday would lead to basically buyers trying to buy pullbacks, right? Buyers trying to buy the dips here as best they can. It, it comes to no surprise when you see a strong move on a Friday, the following Monday is oftentimes going to be a range. You know, it's basically when one day is a big, strong you know move, the following day or you'll see on gold NASDAQ here in a second, the following few hours could be a range bound market. So it's really no surprise here. This is a range. And if you look at it kind of in a bigger picture standpoint right now, you've got the all time highs right there, right at 42.38. So if you're a, if you're, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a day trader, I'm, I'm a short term trader. So I'm not looking for long term positions. But if I was looking for long term positions, this would definitely be where you'd be looking for it, right? Kind of underneath this trading range, right? Typical bull market, double top, right? You know, you've got to think there will be a a lot of buyers who would love to gobble up some of those discounted prices before we make a run up to those all-time highs. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind if this market does make a nosedive here in the overnight session. As we zoom in a bit closer, again, you can really see here, there's your all-time high up there, right? That 42.38 and a quarter. And then we've got this pendulum swing that really lines up nicely. I don't want to go too far backwards here, but if you recall, we had that range from uh, early last week, right? That range, of course, we measured the amount below the range. And if you watched last night's, or, or if you watched last week's newsletters, you saw a lot of these pendulum swings. So got a lot of reasons right now to have your eyes on the all-time highs. I've also got this 42.53 area overhead, 51 one area you'll notice up top there, kind of a, a runner target there for maybe not tomorrow, but later on this week. And of course, that comes off of this strong leg off the low, right? We kind of have one of those one, two, three moves, mark your channel, mark your channel, right? People are buying off of that low right now. I'll take the size of this leg. I'll bring that up, right? And that's going to give us an idea of kind of where that you know, where that, where that next big milestone may be, right? So 42.51, 42.53, you know, again, this is all kind of, you know, later on this week here, but 42.38 and a quarter is the all-time high there. That lines up nicely. That should be a pretty easy objective for buyers. But if we keep going here again, that 42.51, 42.53, those are areas that are on our radar right now. So I just want to make sure I kind of showed you some of the bigger picture stuff that's on my radar here. You know, at this point, at this point, the, again, the key takeaway is it's basically one big trading range, uh, which again is broken up into a bunch of smaller trading ranges, right? Now you will notice on on uh, on the S&P and the NASDAQ today, we will have weekend gaps on the charts. These weekend gaps are anytime you see a closing price on Friday and a gap on Sunday evening. Remember, these are futures markets. They open up at 6 p.m. on Sunday and they trade all the way through to 5 p.m. on Friday. When you have those big gaps like that, the closing price on Friday will be used as kind of a magnet for the rest of the week. Now, obviously, we're kind of back to that weekend gap right now. We'll be tracking that all the way through the closing bell on Friday. So don't be surprised if you see me reference that uh, 42, 27 and three quarters, that level pretty much all week here uh, this week. So, we know we're bullish. We can definitely see the momentum right now with the buyers one, two, three going higher. We can definitely tell the buyers have, you know, these probably the edge overall right now. You had that big move up on Friday. The bears never took out those lows. You know, so you definitely can tell the buyers definitely have the edge on this right now. The hardest part, again, is the fact that you've got to look at this as just basically one big trading range. What do you do with a range bomb? market, you buy low, you sell high, 
and you hopefully avoid the messy middle, right? Avoid the messy middle of that trading range. And that's basically how I want to trade this here for tomorrow. I'd like to get this thing down into these lows and trade the edges off those lows. I wouldn't mind getting up around these highs and selling off right off the highs of that trading range. And I would definitely be open-minded to a pullback at this nice little trend line. I wouldn't mind trading off that off that trend line as well as these buyers try to retest that overall high here. At the same time, I would love to trade a breakout, right? You, again, we saw earlier the NASDAQ breaking out, gold breaking out. So it would make sense the S&P would be following suit that maybe tomorrow as well. So trading a breakout would definitely be on my radar here as well. The key right now is where are the best trades? The most important thing again is to think about this as a range. And what I want to do is, is I want to focus on failures around the edges. So couple different options here right now. I've got, again, I've got this trend line here, that prior swing there. Let me get rid of that channel here. I, I kind of put that channel on there just for kind of demonstration purposes more than anything else. I'm going to try to stay away from that middle here. Couple buy setups on my radar for tomorrow. Now, what you got to remember is, is as the market tries to go lower, it is going to pick up momentum, right? So we have to be careful on that. Again, it's a very wide range. And so what I'll be using is, I'll be using the two try rule to time the entries with failure patterns here tomorrow. For example, I've got this spot right here, 4220 area. Really the reason why I like that spot is because of this rising support trend line. I think my favorite trade for tomorrow would be a pullback into that buy zone. We don't exactly need to get that trend line Line, but I'd love to see, and again, you want to think about momentum, and at the same time, remember, we're going to be very close to the middle of that range on this particular setup. My first kind of go-to pattern on this will be a failure. Because I'm inside the range, though, I want to give those bears two attempts to try to sell. Once I do, then I know exactly where their stops are, and I can use those stops right to buy going higher. So my first kind of favorite trade here, would be what I call a failure pattern. It's going to use the two try rule because again, I, I want to try to stay away from that middle and this is not going to do a very good job of avoiding the middle. So I do want to be a little more conservative. Now, if we really get lucky, we'll go all the way down to those lows and get that pattern down there right? Bears come in, try once, bears try twice, stops are now right above that, right that high. And if we can get that entry, we can probably parlay that into a failure, into pullback combination off of that low. That's another one of my favorites. I would say if we could get our hands on that one, that would probably be the best possible trade getting long here for tomorrow, right? Take out some of these lows and kind of that secondary buy zone. Again, let the bears try twice. You can buy into those stop losses, try a trend line off that low, buy into that trend line. There's a lot of variations of these failure patterns. We use a lot of variations in our trade room. And then don't forget to grab that first pullback, right? After it rips higher and then grabs it. You can see an example of that, right? Right here, we go, we go down bears once, bears twice, they fail, and see how they almost immediately come right back and grab that pullback? That's kind of what I'm thinking about here for tomorrow, right? Bears trying a few times, buying into stop losses, right, as we're going higher and grabbing that first pullback. That would be a great way to do it. So again, two try rule, going to be a failure off of that low. That's the one I would say is probably the most challenging because we're in the middle of that range. Really would love to get that deep, deep pullback, get those bears trying a few times once, twice. And again, I'll go, I'll go over more of the variations uh, in our video classes, in our trade room tomorrow morning. Stops are sitting above those highs. If we can get that failure to trigger, we, think, we then go out, mark that high, mark that low, right? And always, always, always that first test, right? First pullback is the best one. Now, again, keep in mind, there's a lot of variations on this. This is a 7,000 tick chart right now on the S&P. I'm going to drill down to like a 1,000 tick chart and find the entry off the low of that channel. My most common entries will be traps 
and buyer failures off those lows on a much faster time frame. I'm not going to go into all those details tonight on this video, but if you do want to learn all my favorite entry techniques, uh, how I find support and resistance, entry triggers like failures and traps, I cover all those smaller details uh, in our free video classes, our, our free trading class. I'll put a little link up there for you in the upper right hand corner. I would definitely grab that link if you haven't done so already. You'll learn my favorite three step strategy. You'll learn all my favorite setups. And that way, that way, when I say, you know, failure into pullback combination, again, I'm not taking this off this 7,000 tick chart, right? I'll take it off that faster time frame. And you'll, you'll, get, you'll get lots of examples of how that works as part of the free trading course. The next one, again, knowing this is a range up here, the next one now would be selling off of that high. How do we sell off that high right now. Now, this is one we really got to be careful with because the bulls will have all of the momentum. So it's very similar to the same setup buying off that low, right? We have to respect the bears. We buy off that low. If we get a run going higher, I'm going to have to respect those bulls, right? Let them try once, let them try twice. And again, lots of different variations on the entries. I can draw a trend line off that high. I can simply wait to sell into stop losses and then don't forget to grab that right that kind of reversal that pullback on the opposite side a buyer failure pattern remember again you don't want to get too aggressive on this right let me saw back here right strong move goes up buyers try once buyers try twice then you can hit it and short that sucker back down into that trading range. Let them try a couple times up here. Then, can I short the top of that trend line? Can I sell into stop losses? Can I sell that? Again, I love that first pullback, right? Off that, off the high of that hidden channel. Those are the kind of the best ways to trade these big, wide, again, wide, wide ranges. Ideally, stay away from the middle. By now, you're probably wondering, okay, how do we trade breakouts? right what's a breakout can look like if it's a range we focus on failures around the edges and we keep our eyes open for breakouts there are a couple pretty easy breakout patterns we can use right now one would be a one two three breakout let's say for example we take out not take out the highs, but let's say, for example, we keep on going higher here. The buyers come in, and instead of the buyers failing after a couple times and back in, the buyers hold that pullback and go. If they get that, what I call a one, two, three breakaway move or breakout pattern now, we know where they're trying to go. They're trying to get those all time highs. So I'm going to mark up that high, I'm going to mark up that low. And this again is where you'll drill down to a faster time frame. You'll see more examples of this in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, free trading course but uh this again we call this a one two three breakout pattern one two three breakout into hidden channel pullback i'm looking for bear traps right i'm looking for failure patterns failures oftentimes lead to pullback combinations and strength moves going higher you'll learn all of that kind of terminology you'll see lots of examples of those patterns right in our free trading course so that would be a breakout another one you'd want to keep in mind would be let's say for example we get another strong rip higher like this right strong rip higher in this case now we're running out of space before we retest those all-time highs watch for that strong move up that shallow pullback that higher high in price and that trap uh, below that low we're going to see some examples of this later on in this video on the gold right gold is ripe uh, nasdaq too for this particular setup and we'll, we'll talk about that as we get deeper into this video now don't forget don't forget if you can combine that what i call a two try trap combine that off the low of that channel that wouldn't be a horrible entry i definitely wouldn't argue with that again remember the key to this one though is strong move up shallow pullback higher high in price remember a lot of times it goes strong move up shallow pullback lower lower high we don't want to buy into that lower high right so if it runs up lower high now you know right now you know okay watch out right that's gonna be a failure setting up as we go back down into that trading range and again we'll we'll, we'll know more once we kind of get our hands on this tomorrow morning in our trade room but that is a breakout or two breakout patterns i have my radar going higher and then of course going lower same thing going lower right it's a very simple strategy if we can get down around those lows if i can get the bears to hold that pull back and go now remember guys 
It doesn't matter how strong the move down is. They have to hold that darn pullback, right? I don't care how strong the move down is. It's a range. They have to hold that pullback. They've tried a couple times already today. They didn't do it, right? So, they we, again, we can't sell that first pullback. But once I get that one, two, three breakdown, then definitely mark up that low, mark up that high. And that's exactly where I'm looking for that entry off the high of that channel. Remember, right, again, 7,000 tick chart here drill it down to a faster time frame. I'm looking for bull traps. I'm looking for buyer failures, failures into pullback combinations. A lot of times what will happen is it'll go up, right? It'll go up above the moving average. Buyers will try. They'll fail. There's that failure into pullback combination, right? So if you can zoom in on that area there, right, on that on that chart, right? Again, you'll learn more about those entry techniques in the video class. All right, we're looking good. So Get a pretty good plan there. We're buying low. We're selling high. We're keeping our eyes out for breakouts, right? One, two, three breakouts. We know where the market wants to go if it goes higher. If it goes lower here tomorrow, which would would, would be a bit surprising. I would imagine you again you'll have buyers waiting down here. But uh, if the buyers if the buyers fail, if this thing does collapse here, I've got that range below us. These big levels down here, 4177 area there will be a magnet for those bears. We'll know more tomorrow though, once we start seeing how this overnight session goes. Right now, remember, trade the edges, buy low, sell high. Focus on those failure setups around the edges. How about some NASDAQ right now? Now, NASDAQ, you can see, has a range right in the middle of that chart, but you'll notice it is difficult to argue with the strength of this move higher. We're definitely bullish. Uh, I would classify this as a trend, right? A trending market means we're looking for continuations and looking for reversals, right? So continuations meaning we're looking to buy pullbacks, Right, and reversals meaning we're looking for potential double tops and reversals back down into that trading range, or uh, we may see just straight up reversals right off of this high here right now. So continuations, right, and reversals. Now again, that range, as you guys know, right, anytime we see overlapping candlesticks, flat moving averages, those ranges do act like magnets. Let me clean up my chart here a little bit so we can kind of get into this stuff here. Again, you'll notice I measured that leg right there's one of those one two three moves I talked about earlier right measured that leg as soon as we have a, a you know an idea of the pullback that will determine where that measured move kind of target is up overhead we don't exactly know where that will be just yet but if we do get that pullback we can get in on that pullback we know kind of where that again where that measured move uh, is is going to be calculated from right so we know that much right now very strong move higher you'll notice we call those open loops in our trade room right strong move up there's a bit there's a very high you know high likelihood we get a pullback a retest that high do we keep going from there do we reverse off of that high those are some of the things on my radar right here for tomorrow so as you can see, buyers have it. Uh, I thought it was pretty interesting how they broke through that pendulum swing pretty easily, right? The amount we went below the range, the amount we go above the range, they had no problem breaking and pushing through that. That definitely tells us uh, we have a breakout on our hands here. I thought it would be a good idea, though, to zoom out real quickly here, though. Let's, let's take a look in the big picture here because you can kind of see what's going on, right? We had that big move up. Right from last Friday, again, no surprise. It should come. It should come at no surprise when a big move on Friday or yesterday doesn't doesn't need to be a Friday. Uh, yesterday turns into a choppy sideways range, as the markets tend to balance. You know, balance themselves out here that following day. Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we expect to see a retest the high. And if that strong move is really big, it oftentimes goes sideways. Now, much like the S and P, right? We had a range last week and that range 
kind of projects us now. Again, there's that pendulum swing again, right? The amount below the range is the amount above the range. Not to worry. You'll learn a lot more about these techniques in our video classes here at School of Trade. And then, of course, you'll notice, right, the pendulum puts me up there at 13,901. Now, of course, that is not the all-time high. It feels like it might be. The all-time high is at 14,064. Seems a bit unrealistic for tomorrow, but hey, I mean, we saw how far this market ran when we had that uh, that poor jobs report tomorrow. We got that inflation report later on this week. Would it surprise me to see it keep running? Not at all. As I go forward here and kind of zoom in, you'll notice here I've done is I've drawn a channel off of those lows, uh, off the highs, off the lows, and it almost looks like they're starting to flesh out what might be a new spike in channel, right? Spike up into a channel here. That's where I'm finding that channel from. And then, of course, you'll notice as I zoom in a bit closer here right now, I've got a relatively steep channel there. I mentioned this earlier, right? Strong move up, shallow pullback, higher high in price. Traps, baby. That would be a fantastic buy here for the bulls going forward. Even able to use that prior swing. Definitely something I'm watching here for tomorrow. And I like that one a lot because you look closely if I take off this big channel real quickly here, you'll notice I've drawn a, tr a trend line off of those lows. And so really this whole area, right? Prior swing high there, prior major high there, uh, trend line coming in, weekend gap. I mean, this is, you got to be thinking buyers would love to buy that dip down there. And so that's pretty much kind of where I'm looking to get long as well. It all depends on how the market pulls back for us right now, right? You know, for example, uh, I would love to see, again, it's, it's, it's a trending market, right? So we're trying to buy pullbacks. We're trying to trade continuations. I would love to get underneath that low. I've got that strong move up, shallow pullback, higher high in price, right? Do I see a trap? Now, when it comes to traps, what you want to get is that strong, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll uh, talk more about this inside the video course, right? That free video course I mentioned in the upper right-hand corner. Grab the little link that little popped up there earlier. Take the video class here. We'll talk about this more details in the video class. But remember, on those traps, what you want is, is you want a really, really quick signal and you want a nice strong close, right? Ideally back above the moving average here. And again, you'll learn all those details in the free course I keep mentioning. But uh, that would be a fantastic, again, a, a trap entry on that one. And again, don't forget the size of that leg will determine kind of where that you know interim target will be on the other side of that move here. So that is one I'm watching right now. Another one too would be, let's say we go a bit further. Right, We don't get the actual trap we want. Now we end up going down into maybe the top of this range, the weekend gap, right? the trend line. Now what happens is, is we start to see some bears come in. right? The bears come in. They go, oh, perfect. We've reversed. But here's the problem. We haven't reversed. What do we need for a reversal? We need the bears to actually hold that pullback. The bulls have all of that momentum right now. So if the sellers, hopefully they will be, if the sellers are foolish enough to sell that first pullback, our job is to wait for them to fail and buy into their stop losses. So basically, this is a great example where we can combine that failure into a pullback combination, right? Failure setup pullback set up, you know, and again, right, this is a, this is a 4,000 tick chart. I'll drill down on an 800 tick chart, give or take a few ticks here and there, right, to get those entry signals on a faster time frame, right? But again, trap will be great, but if it really pulls back deeper, don't just force the trap. Again, we've got plenty of support down here. Let those bears, let them dig their own grave, right? Let them get short off that first pullback and hit them right where it hurts, right, where bears are getting stopped down out buyers will take over that will jump up and then between you me and the wall i can mark up that high i can mark up that low that is a sweet spot right so failure into pullback combination these oftentimes lead into strength moves failure pullback strength moves You'll see lots of examples of those as part of that free trading course linked up in the upper right hand corner so now we get a pretty good idea here shallow pullback trap deep 
pull back, right? Failure. Uh, one more thing we should probably mention here as well. You'll notice we're kind of in this, uh, this, this resistance zone up top here. We do oftentimes see, got some big news coming this week. We do oftentimes see markets start off below a range, chop around, spit out, and then go into a new range. Now, this would also go for the gold tomorrow and the S&P for that matter. If the S&P was to break out higher here, it would be a good idea for us to keep an eye out for a range up here. Now, obviously, there's nothing to worry about yet, right? But if we start seeing this thing go sideways here overnight, right? Double top. You know, you'll you'll notice it, right? It'll go sideways. There'll be overlapping candlesticks. The moving average flattens out. What do we do in that scenario? What do we do? We, we look for pullbacks to support levels below the range, right? Trend line is there. Swing low is there. Not a lot changes. What you want to do, though, is, is you're no longer focused on traps. Now you're focused on failure patterns, right? Whatever we have a range, what do you do? Failures and breakouts. We talked about what a breakout looks like on the S&P already. This would be a failure, right? We go below the range. The bears come in. They think they've now reversed. But again, a reversal has to hold that pullback, right? If they don't, our job is to wait for those bears to get in. I am not trying to pick a bottom on this. That's a rookie mistake. It's very difficult to pick those bottoms. I would much rather wait for the bottom to get in, let the bears come in, try to run this thing lower, because remember, they could be successful. I don't know they're going to fail. All I know is the odds are on our side of a failure. And so once those buyers fail, I know exactly where their stops are. I know exactly where their pain points are. The easiest money you'll ever make in day trading is when you're getting in with momentum and counter momentum or counter trend traders are being forced out at their stop losses. Those will oftentimes snap right back up and retest the high of that trading range. So definitely keep our eyes open right on a possible right on a possible range uh, as we go higher here. And then last but not least, how would we trade a failure or, or reversal, right? Because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a trending day. And, and trending markets, well, they don't keep going forever. Sometimes they reverse. Now, there's a couple different reversals I always like to look for. Uh, one of them is called, is called the, the, the kind of the bounce reversal, if you will. Imagine for a moment here, we get that pullback, we get that failure, right? And we snap back up and retest the high. Then what happens is... The bears come over, one, two, three, and they run off the highs. That one, two, three reversal, they didn't do it here, but oftentimes when you get these big strong runs like this, you'll get the buy off the low, right? That pullback failure for the bears, we buy in the stops, they'll retest the high, but they won't be able to keep it going. Once that happens and you get that one, two, three move off the high, now mark up that new low, mark up that new channel high and grab that first pullback off the high of that channel. Okay, that's the easiest way to trade the reversal, right? I kind of call it a, a bounce reversal. Now, another one would be we go up, we pull back, we double top off the high, and now this is the tricky one. The buyers try a couple times, right? The buyers try once, the buyers try twice. Remember, these are failures, right? But after you, right, after you take out that high here, again, find that trend line, you know where stops are, and we can short into those stop losses. This one, I'll give you a hint. These usually take longer than you think they will. Okay, you're not oftentimes going to see a real strong bull trend just reverse in a you know in, in a five minute period. A lot of times these reversals will take 15, 20 minutes. Uh, I always tell my clients the bigger right, the bigger the move, the wider the reversal needs to be. And we'll talk more about that that detail tomorrow morning in our trade room. But that would be a reversal I would look for as well. And then let's not forget right. There's always there's always the possibility this market makes a strong pullback, holds the pullback, and runs. If it does that, where are they trying to get to? They're trying to take out those lows, right? At that point, I'm definitely not going to chase the market lower. There's a big bullseye right now on that low of day, right? There'll be a full rejection of these buyers. I'll mark up that low, mark up that high. And again, I'm not going to blindly sell the high. 
I'm looking for bull traps. I'm looking for buyer failures, right? Looking to short off the top of that. Again, this is a 4,000 tick chart. I'll drill down to 800 tick chart or so and short with bull traps, buyer failure triggers off the high of that new channel. All right, guys. So I think I've covered quite a few variations here in this video. We're getting kind of late in the video right now. I'm going to fill in all the blanks tomorrow, obviously, in our trade room. But now you kind of know some of the things I'm looking for to capitalize on Tuesday in the NASDAQ. And again, right, a lot more space to go here as we go higher. You know, if we keep, if we keep, for example, kind of grinding higher here, you know that everyone is waiting on that trap, right? You know traps, failures, right? So if we keep them going higher, trap patterns, failure patterns, that's your bread and butter as we right as we keep pushing higher there and that leads me now over to the gold right gold is definitely a market that uh well let's grab it on the gold here right now gold is a kind of a grinding market right uh very low volume on gold today i think gold was only like 150,000 contracts traded the entire day today so very very low volume now that could be that could be because of uh, a thursday cpi report right thursday's ecb announcement but that's pretty early in the week to be you know curling up in the fetal position ahead of that big news right because that's kind of what it felt like here today grindy market now real quickly here you can obviously see a trend right this is not a range there is a range on this chart right now but this is not a range bound market so the key takeaway here on gold is it is a trending day or trending market which means we're looking for continuations and reversals at the same time like i mentioned earlier the nasdaq right when you get these kind of slingshots like this oftentimes they will end up going sideways so we do want to kind of use that same guidance uh, about possible sideways movement for tomorrow if i zoom all the way out here real quickly you can kind of see there's a there's a monster bullseye right on those highs up there right i mean this is probably the easiest target we have on all the charts here right now you know, NASDAQ all-time highs, S&P all-time highs, gold, it's just, you know, there's, there's no question about where these buyers are trying to go. Uh, also, too, remember, if the bears were to grab control of this, right, that range below us, big lows below, so... I'll tell you, there's a lot of wiggle room back and forth on this chart. Look at these swings, right? Strong move down, strong move up. So it's not a huge surprise the kind of the kind of the, the market's a bit of a you know a bit of a bit of a breather right now because of all that crazy volatility we've seen over the past couple of weeks or the past couple of days. We'll see if that uh, picks back up here for tomorrow. Now, a couple things here. If I kind of unpack this a little bit more, if I mark up that high and bring it down to that low, right? That creates kind of like that very wide, wide channel. Whenever we see a wide channel, you always want to keep your eyes on that midline, right? Midlines are midlines are not very effective when the channel's narrow, but they're really effective when it's a wide channel. So that's definitely going to be something on my radar. And you can see I've got it referenced right with that with that buy zone there. The next thing too is is that you'll notice here, uh, we have a grinding move going higher. Now, typically when a market grinds higher, like I mentioned on the NASDAQ, typically you're looking for traps, right? The problem though is there's no traps to be found here. Uh, the only, you know, the only trap I see right now would be down below this 95.1, but hello, that's a hell of a pullback. That is not a trap, right? It, it might, it might be a, you know, successful trap. You've got that spot right there. I can see why folks might like it, but in, in my eyes, when you pull that far below the moving average, you've got to respect those bears, wait for them to come in and use that as a failure, right? Basically. So that's probably the most concerning part about this chart. Maybe not concerning, but maybe disappointing. You know, I, I would love, I would love to, to see this thing continue grinding here, grab some traps as we try to make that run. Because again, as I mentioned in the introduction, this thing could keep on kind of slow walking its way, right? Melting up, as they call it, up to that 1950 area. So we definitely do kind of want to want to keep that on our radar uh, here for tomorrow. So as mentioned earlier, I want to buy pullbacks. I've got my channel on here. I like the channel. I like that strong move higher. 
Uh, I would love to buy a pullback. And to do that, it'll be a failure pattern. I don't see a trap. I would love a trap, but I don't see a good trap on this pad- on this chart right now. I really want to get down ideally into this midline or, or, or really ideally into this area right there, 1895 area. Get that pullback. Again, I'm not trying to pick the bottom on this. What I'll do is I'll wait for bears to come in, let them try to get short. Once they do, I know exactly where their stops are. I can buy into stop losses. I can buy pullbacks, right? And that combination, failure into pullback combination, failure into pullback combination, failure below the moving average pops up into a pullback. They're very, very common when you have a strong momentum move. So that would be on my radar for tomorrow, those failure into pullback, right? Combinations here. Again, I would also be, I would also kind of keep your eyes open for possibly a bigger, deeper pullback as we go because you've got that big channel. Like I mentioned, it's definitely not likely, but how would I trade that one? I would trade that one by making sure the bears try twice, right? We get that deep, deep pullback, bears try once, bears try twice, just like we talked about on the S&P, right? Respect momentum. It's a great location to be a buyer, right? Range is a magnet. It's a great it's a great spot to be a buyer, but, you know, again, not a good momentum. Momentum's very bearish at that time. Let them try a couple times. Again, let them tire themselves out, then use those stop losses as gasoline to run this thing back higher again. We can buy into stop losses. We can also forget, grab that channel, right? A lot of this is very similar. We talked about earlier on the S&P 500, right? That it's a deep pullback, nested failure, what we call them nested failures, right? Or two try failures into that. Again, I'm not simply blindly buying the low of that channel. I'm using things like bear trap entries, right? Trap entries, failure entries, failure into pullback combinations, right? That kind of, right? That failure into pullback combination on a faster time frame. those happen all the time right there. Right, so we'll definitely be drilling down and watch for that entry here uh, for tomorrow. Again, keep your eyes out for a range on this, right? Keep your eyes open for a range. If we do end up going range bound, what do we do? We mark up prior swings, we find you know levels of support, and we wait for those pullbacks. We don't try to pick a bottom. We wait for the bears to get short. We know where the stops are, and we use failure patterns to run this thing back up into that new range. That is very likely here at some point tomorrow on the gold. And we might end up being in a range the rest of the week until Thursday's CPI report and the ECB report comes out on Thursday morning. So keep your eyes open uh, on the ranges on the, uh, on the yellow metal. And then of course, right, if we do keep grinding higher, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. Again, we've got kind of this short squeeze going on back to that 1950 area. If this market was to, for example, right, continue to grind higher here, what do we do? Well, at that point, we have one of the most difficult markets to trade, which is basically a short squeeze or a melt up market. These might be very fast. It could be very slow, but if we keep on grinding and we don't get deep pullbacks, I, I, I warn you, this is the most probably the most difficult market to trade because you don't get a lot of these every month. When you see the market won't pull back, it keeps on grinding, keeps on grinding. What I always do is is I cut my size in half, right? So cut my 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 position size in half. So cut that in half, and then your job is to go traps right? Trap entries. And what, what I'll do is, is I purposely cut my size in half just in case the trap turns failure and I can do it again, right? And that's the way you'll have to trade a market like this if it does melt up, right? It, it happens. It will happen. We saw it on Friday. It's the only way to do it. I talked about this on the NASDAQ, right? But again, if it keeps on kind of grinding higher and we're not getting that deep pullback, you know, we're not getting that pullback, that failure, we want those pullbacks, right? We want those pullbacks well under the moving average. If it keeps on grinding higher, we know, right? We know where they're trying to go. They're trying to get that 15, 19 year overhead here. At that point now, mark up those lows and your job literally, again, cut your size in half, get underneath that low. I always go in half size position so I can take it on a, a trap. And then if I, if I get stopped on the trap, right, I'll hit it again. 
right? Because I will have split my size in half. I'll have the risk tolerance needed to hit it twice. And, you know, it, it, it's not fun to get a loss on it, but you don't know if it'll trap and go or failure and go. So you got to find your way in on it. We'll, we'll know more about that tomorrow morning in the trade room. But, you know, again, if it grinds higher here, cut that size down, focus on traps, just find a way in. All right, I'm telling you, they're, they're not easy because they're going to feel like you're getting very aggressive, but you're going to have to get aggressive. And if it stops you out, wait for that next trap signal, wait for the failure, and hit that one again. Right? It's probably one of the most difficult kind of conditions of trade. But, you know, again, when you notice the market's not pulling back for you, uh, you definitely, and this is definitely one of those situations where you could, you could see that melt up environment where you've got that, again, that big move down. This could easily grind higher here as traders anticipate a big inflation number coming out on Thursday. So just be aware of that right as we go here. And then last but not least here, right? How do we trade the reversal? Uh, a bounce reversal, like I mentioned earlier uh, on the NASDAQ, right? This would also apply to the S&P as well. Uh, I do want to buy that pullback if they retest the high. Do we get that one, two, three bouncing off the high? Mark that low, mark that high, right? Short the top of that channel. Right, you know, again, right, we're, we're buying that pullback. And then once we see it take out the highs, we get that one, two, three reversal. We then, of course, right, drill down to a faster time frame. You'll learn those smaller details in the free video course. I keep mentioning the upper right hand corner. I want to make sure you guys grab that. That way, that way, that way the next time I say one, two, three, into first test of the best test, you'll know what I'm talking about, right? So one, two, three, reversal, one, two, three, hit that high. Or again, every once in a while, we'll get lucky. It'll go up, double top off it, or, you know, something, something close to the top, right? Buyers once, buyers twice. Again, I can draw the trend line. I can sell into stop losses. These are failures, right? But they're basically one try, two try. We're shorting off the trend line after the buyers try twice. We're shorting the stop losses. And then again, we're grabbing that channel on the opposite side and hitting it right off that first pullback. We, we've talked about this a few times uh, already here as well. So same idea goes here on that reversal. But that's it for me tonight though, guys. Running low on time here tonight. I apologize to keep you waiting here on this video. We, we lost power here for a few hours in the office this afternoon. So it's kind of scrambling to play catch up here all day today. I'm sure I missed a couple scenarios, but not to worry. I will not miss those tomorrow in our trade room. Don't forget, I'll put all of the membership information, all the registration links you guys need. I'll put that in the description of the YouTube video. So grab that link in the description. I will see you tomorrow morning at eight o'clock Eastern time. Tonight, don't be afraid to call the office. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions, help you get registered, or if membership isn't quite right for you, I can at least help point you in the right direction so you're ready to go for later on in the month of June. Uh, don't be afraid. Again, got live chat on the left, live chat on the right. Don't be afraid to drop those questions and comments in the comment section below. And I hope by now I've earned a thumbs up on the video. I hope you subscribe because I don't want you to miss tomorrow night's video. As you can see, I'm not messing around on this nightly news. But that's it for me tonight, though, guys. Have a fantastic rest of your evening. Great to be here with you guys on this second week of the month of June. Now get some rest. Follow those rules tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll see you tomorrow morning at the opening bell. If not, make sure you come back and see us tomorrow night on hopefully an earlier edition of our nightly newsletter. That's it for me, guys. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.